Let's give our ace high a little tank and then make the decision to call. Spades, I'm not too scared of those. Oh, I have a boat, what the fuck? Huh, even better. Here, I think that seven is a pretty decent card. King 9, 10 makes a straight, five, six makes a straight. He might have pocket sevens, but I'm definitely working with over bets here. Having the king of diamonds is, is a little plus. Little scared always of those check backs on boards that you could range bet, that it's just all the jack tens and eight nines and pocket nines and pocket sevens that are just not folding because they all have like blockers against the hands I'm wrapping. Yeah, now I have a king high flush because I play king x suited the same way. And um, yeah, I think I'm forced to just jam. Um, if he has a jack, he has a catcher, but will probably end up calling. But I need I need the nines folds. I need the eight x folds. So this should be fine. It's just a play. I play my value hands like that. Um, and I think that should be fine. I don't expect too many flush, flushes on his side, like maybe some four x of diamonds. But um, yeah, I have my value hands here. So it's it's fine either way. Okay, top right, I went for a range bet on that board, a uh, range min bet. Now the question is, how do I split my aces? I mean, I have a good value bet with some of the aces and this one is random. I wanna have some in my checking range, some in my betting range. And yeah, let's, let's go for the bet this time. Jack, deuce of hearts, 40 big blinds. I need to defend, like this would be a 400 bigs quite often in, or like sometimes in the three betting range. I think we want to have a little more ace x, king x heaviness when we are shorter, just to, to block his four bet jams. This year I was, I did raise. I think I can bet very high frequency here on those ace high boards because he re-jams a lot of those. All well, bottom right, we're just playing passively uh, call mode on that board. Try to hit one of our 12 outs. And that jack-10 offsuit is kind of the same thing like our ace-3 off on the ace-king-king board. I think it's too weak to just go all the way and say like you don't have an ace often enough. So I check now and then put out a, a, a turn bet, a river bet. Uh, just thinking about the sizing. Actually, like the diamond is a good card for him. I roll the clear bet. Let's go for the block. Jack, deuce of hearts. I have multiple options for betting here. Nice. Given the shortness, like I'm less interested in my ace five suited and rather go for like ace nine, ace eight suited type of hands because high cards should be increase a little in value. So I just let that one go, which would be, I guess 100% three bet for 100 picks. Trying to adjust there a little on the go. What's happening here? People just playing for five minutes and then leaving again. People jumping back and forth. King Jack suited now, uh, this is 40 big blinds. I think, I mean, I'm, I'm definitely playing with a flatting range and that fits in quite well, but it's so ugly against him squeeze jamming. So um, it's like I kind of priced myself. I'm not calling off his jam, even though it's close, but he didn't do anything so far. And I'm priced in against uh, Robin's four bet jam. Let's go from there. Flatting is an option as well. I'm not sure. 40 big blinds is, is wild here with those different stack sizes. It's like I have some 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 stuff in mind from my tournament background, but then I have the missing ante, which makes the calling always way worse. And against half pot, I'm actually just folding here. I think it will be like a, he makes that with the 10 of hearts usually is a float against a small bet, but he makes it half pot. So it's it's just close. But maybe it's like interesting as well from that uh, perspective to see like how is it going on on high stakes. Like people are table hopping. Recreationals are playing for five hands, then taking some money and then playing another table instead. And it's like 11 a.m. here at, at, uh, at my place. So it's really not a not busy time. So this is why the tables are not filling up. Yeah, Jack 4 suited. It's fine. It's a high card. It's suited. I, I start folding some low cards for, for that here, um, for that small stack size. I'm not sure what's the best play here. I think it might even be the check jam with a double backdoor because like the turn will get so ugly. I think I need to realize equity with a double backdoor. It sucks so much if like turn is a three of hearts, deuce of hearts, queen or king and I face the next barrel. So this is what I want to not have. I have fold equity and I'm doing okay against an ace and against a 10 that will be calling. Those games, uh, often often there are short stacks involved. I should I should work a little more on those on those strategies post-flop there. I'm more a little freestyling, I have to, I have to admit. Pocket jacks. Like after that tank, it's not an ace. I feel great that he tanks with a 10 or whatever. Okay. I think jacks should be more, more of a snap, but what do I know? Here, just thinking about the options, three betting and flatting. This is a decent, uh, I don't have the full 40 big, so it's it's really pricey to look like, I cannot really three bet fold here if he jams some pockets. So I go for the flat instead. What I was thinking about was like, which offsuit broadways am I folding out? Is that beneficial for me? And I fold out king 10 offsuit 
and queen 10 offsuit. King Jack offsuit, he might call, might fold. So yeah, three way, he can see that wide range. I have some King X in my range. I could actually lead that board. Should have taken some time here, but now I think I think I just gotta let go, it's close. If I'm in his position and close the action, I think I can flat. There's another guy joining with 20 bigs, stacking off first hand. That's a good start. I'm just thinking about open sizing on the top table, just because I don't want to give extra value to his regems and I want to play 2.5x against that guy. So let's let's find the in-between model here. I mean, obviously with tens, I hope for him to regem, but uh, still, I have enough raised folds there. I need to adjust a little. That's like a little the problem where the advantage of the, the, the shortest stack on the table just is always there. This is why some people are short stacking. Obviously some are just not good deep as well, but this is like an advantage you're having that I want to play like my 100 PP strategy against him, but I'm forced to deviate. And if I'm not, it's actually Robin making some money. He has better risk reward. He gets rewarded 2.5x for his regem, as if like compared to that everyone had 20 bigs, I would min raise probably, but actually played the same range. So it's a little power of short stacking. 7-6 offsuit can be interesting if we all were deep uh, against a 20 BB MP open range. I'm not interested at all. Queen 7 suited, definitely playing that hand. Another blind versus blind against George. Very, very good player. 0.5x, plays the same strategy as I am there, seems like. And uh, let's go. And this board is for him. Sure whether he range bets or put puts in some, some like, it's like, I think like for 20 and under, he will range bet all the time here. Maybe he starts checking some King X, probably not. Just because I have still some Ace X here, but not rejamming all of them, but yeah. Oh, this is a beautiful hand. Let's try to get the maximum in here, which is, well, actually the maximum is both their stacks, but. I'm fine with 25 big lines here. So deuce X should not be a factor. You should check raise very high frequency on that board. So I could check back sometimes or I could bet. Let's randomize. I mean, the randomizer says check. I think it's both is in there on, on like other paired boards. Definitely if it's like if he has it more, but like he never has the deuce pretty much. So I could probably still range bet. I'm not sure. Just have so many offsuit high cards there. Oh, he starts over betting. This looks to me like a nine and I'm sitting on ace high. If that is the thing. I mean, against nine, I'm not making any money. So I'm making money if he's bluffing here or river something. Let's give our ace high a little tank and then make the decision to call. Spades, I'm not too scared of those. Oh, I have a boat, what the fuck? Huh, even better. Really tough. I lose to the king deuce of diamonds. Hmm, this is this is interesting. Queen Jack off suit going for it. I mean that's a nice addition to like his 9x that he plays that way. I have no clue how that 20bb board should play out. So uh, yeah, maybe my check is just ridiculously bad. Maybe it's not, but I think it makes sense in a way. And here 40 big blinds, perfect, perfect stack size to find jacks. 10-5 suited. I'm going to defend uh, here against this 40 big blind stack. Still haven't seen anything of him really. I look just on the on the side in the in the replayer, and I haven't seen. There were no big pots played on that table. Tiny three bet here. It's probably going wide range. Maybe ISOs every hand he plays might be a reason that I need to. I mean, to need to go a little crazier with cold four betting, just reacting to his wider range. Seventeen bigs. I could open jam. Think actually this is the best play. Min raise calling would be fine as well. Jack 10 student here, 30 big blinds, never three betting, just always clicking this call button. And now we have an interesting board. My check raises are mainly like some king five, king six type of hands, but I think this is good enough to go for a float. Yeah, looks like queen jack, queen 10 has some backdoor equity and uh, yeah, hope for a shutdown on the turn, win on some river cards and uh, yeah, play it the same way like queen jack, queen 10, if it goes check down now. Nope. That's okay. Ace-8 offsuit, I'm three betting definitely if there's anti involved or I'm VPIPing, I'm flatting or three betting. Here for 40 big blinds, I think I only go for it sometimes, especially with that short stack again, I get punished a lot, so I need to knit up. I think I started Ace-9. So here, given the sizing, I focus on the <clears throat> big blind mainly. So here I go for the, for the min race, all top right. Against a small bet, I have a mixed call. Against a big bet, I have a clear fold. Oh, that would've been interesting. So then I rolled a call, hit my king on the turn. So now please no over bet in my face. Then we are all good. Loving a check back, taking a normal bet. When you then check back the river, this looks just perfect. I beat everything but a five. He bets every better king on the turn. Unfortunately, he bets nines, tens and jacks on the turn as well. So it's like he has eight X, he has ace highs, he has five X, he has all the peers. 
I have all the busted gut shots, so I think King 10 is, makes it into an overbet range that I definitely have here because I have way more 5x than he should have. Plenty of potential bluffs, so I think this fits very well into a 150% bet here. And he sits there and has to catch his 8, has to catch actually like some other pairs, has to catch actually some ace highs. Obviously having snap fold against any race, we have our 5x for that. Tank call seems good. Ace Queen High. All right, I think this is a very good hand by him because he unblocks the back doors. I'm more likely to float when I have a backdoor flush draw. His Ace Queen unblocks all that. He's unblocking all the potential draws that busted. So I think this sweep just both played that hand pretty well. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to support the channel and stay always up to date, then leave a subscribe here or check out our next video.